In 1989, I began drawing commonplace objects, a series called 10,000 Things That Breathe. I would choose an object, sit before it, draw until it breathes, let it go, and move on to the next. My process is simple, but my method is extreme. I use a ballpoint pen, and I work the ink in thousands upon thousands of layers, for weeks combining patches of ink in myriad ways, not yielding until a tiny patch on paper comes alive with presence. Someone once remarked that I paint using a ballpoint pen. Another said that I build drawings. One curator observed that I use realism as a strategy for smuggling something else. I smuggle presence. In 1999, my work began to branch out into other series. Among the earliest was drawer drawings. People would ask me if I would draw specific things for them. I would say, let's go to your home. Let me search through your drawers and closets for something to draw. When finished, I'll install the drawing in a drawer in your home. I won't tell anyone what I drew for you. No scans, no photographs. The prerogative to share it belongs to you. You choose those with whom to share the drawing. It marks your inner boundary. Soon I realized that I prefer having my drawings hidden in drawers and shelves. But how do I show hidden installations? It was not until I did another branch, the Iraq Memorial, that I came upon an elegant solution to the problem. The Iraq Memorial consists of sheets of paper over which I write the names of Iraqi men, women and children, casualties of war. These unravel, an endless sea of names taken from files maintained by human rights activists to drive home the true cost of war. I write the names down in an upside-down mirror script that veils them from western eyes and, as is my practice, draw 10,000 things over them. The Iraq Memorial showed me how I might install drawings in shelves, draw directly over text, printed text. What better way to install drawings in drawers and shelves than by drawing directly over the pages of books? Bookworks is 10,000 things that breathe, rendered in books and printed matter. As I am in the business of smuggling presents, Bookworks allows me not only to hide my works in drawers and shelves, but also to combine the presence embodied in my drawing with the visuality and phonology of text found on a printed page. What I draw has little to do with the book's narrative or purpose. This juxtaposition of both drawing and printed matter results in a harmonious synergy and the breakdown of meaning, which creates a vacuum that is eventually filled with new meaning. It is not uncommon for people to read meaning when none was intended. This format paved the way for the differentiated objects that now populate bookworks. I draw nudes in dictionaries, various cuts of raw meat in Bibles, an anatomical part in physics and mathematical monographs, mushrooms, shoes and leaves in works of fiction, animals in music scores, and human ears in library books. Last year, I drew human ears in 15 books and installed them in libraries all over the Philippines. Library Bookworks is my most public installation. It is also my most hidden, so I created prints of these drawings with call number labels. These labels serve as the drawing's titles. They also provide a clue to the location of the original drawings. This year, I return to the blank page, turning my attention on the only branch that has yet to be exhibited. Bloodworks. 
Bloodworks consists of ballpoint pen drawings of menstrual blood stains donated to me by women friends, my blood donors. They send me blood stains in fragments of loose fabric, bed sheets, and underpants. I approach the blood stains as I would any other object, applying ballpoint ink on paper, pushing that thin film of ink from my ballpoint pen onto the paper's tiny fibers and pits, brushing this way and that way, sometimes allowing cakes of ink to bleed on paper, always working the ink in layers, thousands of layers, until the ink comes alive and all ideas of menstrual bloodstains and all related conceptual artifacts dissolve in my mind, leaving only the smell of ink, that patch of ink, that very palpable presence, this clear and simple presence, that, after all, is what it means to breathe to be present, to be.